children bang sweet hoes on us ring the company of angels are praising you on high creation and all mortals in chorus make reply all glory on and on to your redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosanna on us ring the multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present all glory lord and honor to your redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosts on us ring to you before their passion they sang their hymns of praise to you now high exalted our melody we raise all glory lord and honor to you redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosts on us ring their praises you accepted accept the prayers we bring great author of all goodness all good and gracious king all glory lord and honor to you redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosts on us As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe seated. Come on up. <laughs> You're going to have to help me up. <laughs> Right, you walked up here. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to read to you a book that's called Journey with Jesus in Easter Story. So this kind of tells the story of this whole week um, that we have in the church here. Um, and I think tells it in a way that, um, <laughs> it tells it in a way that hopefully um, makes some sense to you. It says, when Jesus rode a peaceful beast at Passover, the Jewish feast, folks gathered in a joyous swell to greet their Lord, Emmanuel. So here he is riding in on a donkey. That's the first part of the story. We just kind of did that a little bit with walking in here. Our Lord and his apostles met to share a meal they'd not forget. Then Jesus blessed and broke some bread. He shared a cup of wine and said... Keep this forever in your view, my blood poured out for all of you. So he's sharing the thing we call communion with the disciples. Then Jesus got some cloth to cleanse the dusty feet of all his, of his dear friends. A new command I give to you, love each other as I love you. Has anybody ever washed your feet? Like, Yeah. For a tubby, right? Yeah. <laughs> That night in dark Gethsemane, while Jesus prayed in agony, he was arrested while he prayed. For silver, Jesus was betrayed. The one I kiss is the one you seek. Then Judas kissed him on the cheek. 
then went to Pilate, who they went to, to Pilate, who are you then, king? Who are you then, king of the Jews? The trial completed, he decreed that Jesus walked to Calvary. This man is innocent, he sighed. Still, take him to be crucified. Poor Jesus stumbled on his way, so Simon bore the cross that day. So someone helped him carry it. His fate, a simple cross of wood. His mother right beneath him stood. Men placed a sign above his head. King of the Jews is what it read. Then Jesus died on Calvary. He gave his life for you and me. But that's not where the story ends. And soon the ground began to shake. The skies grew dark. A huge earthquake. The guardians were terrified. This was the Son of God, they cried. So they realized who Jesus was. Disciples placed him in a grave, in Joseph's tomb within a cave. A heavy stone was rolled in place at what would be his resting place. So they buried Jesus in a tomb. And we always imagine it with a big, because it says that, they put a big rock in front of it to close it up. But Sunday morning at first light, three women saw a wondrous sight. Those women there were not alone. An angel rolled away the stone. Behold the Lord whom you revere. He's risen now. He's not here. Go look for Jesus, Nazarene. Nazarene. Tell his disciples what you've seen. The women trembled as they went to the upper room where they were sent, to, the, to where the apostles hid from view, till Jesus said, Peace be with you. He stood among them and beseeched, Come see my hands, come see my feet. I've risen as the Father willed. What has become? What has been written is fulfilled. When Jesus died on Calvary, he gave his life for you and me. Because of our Lord's sacrifice, now all can enter paradise. So that kind of tells the story of this whole big long week. And we have church almost every night this week and next Sunday and all kinds of things going on. So it's a really important week. So this book tries to tell us the whole story. Okay? Kind of make sense? A little bit? Maybe? Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this week and for this journey we get to take with you. Help us to think about and understand what you did for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead, I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. 
but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't stand. <laughs> and pray watch and pray the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord it was two days before the passover and the festival of unleavened bread the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest jesus by stealth and kill him for they said, not during the festival, or there will be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you, follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born." 
While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you sleeping and taking your rest? Your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came... He went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught a hold of him, but the, he left the linen cloth and ran off naked.
ancient prayer. Ancient prayer. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy the temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Stay with me, remain here with me. Watch and pray. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. <coughs> Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring, bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the resurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. And what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But 
they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! He struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And when they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left, those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joses and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Stay with me.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Stay with me. Remain here with me. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. I wonder, in that first part of the reading, we read from Mark's gospel about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As the day ended, he went into the temple, and he looks around. And I wonder what he thought at that moment. He knew what was going to happen. He knew how it was going to unfold. I wonder if he thought, is anyone going to stay with me? Will anyone stay with me the whole way to the end? I've often wondered what Jesus thought in those moments. He takes Peter and James and John with him as he goes off to pray in preparation for what is about to happen. He tells them, stay, remain here, stay with me, watch and pray. And Jesus goes off. And in his prayer, we know that he prays to God. I don't want this to be this way, but if it's your will, your will be done. Three times that happens. Jesus comes back, finds the disciples weary and tired. They couldn't stay and watch. They were there, but they were asleep. But Jesus goes away again. Stay with me. Remain with me. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. He goes off. He comes back. Again, they're asleep. Again, they cannot watch and pray. And one more time, it happens. We'd like to think that we would have stayed, that we would have stayed awake, that we would have remained with Jesus. We'd like to think that because we know how the story ends. We know how the story unfolds. But they didn't. They didn't know how the story was going to unfold. They were afraid. They were scared. They were all sorts of things. And so they did what I think I surely would have done. I think all of us would have done. We would have fallen asleep. We would have run away. We would not have stayed. We would not have afforded Jesus that very thing which we afford to the ones that we love and care for so deeply when we have that chance to stay with them at that moment in their lives when they need us the most. To stay and to pray and to be with them. We're going to hear this theme throughout this week. Stay with me. This is a week full of worship, full of a hard story that we'd rather jump over and not think about. We'd much rather jump from Palms to Easter. We'd rather jump over the hard part of the story but we are invited to stay and to pray 
and to be with each other as we hear this story again and again this week. This journey that Christ took for us. This journey that Christ takes for us. This journey that he is always with us on. This journey to death and to resurrection. I encourage you to stay with the story this week. To remain with Jesus this week. To watch and to pray. And watch and pray. And watch and pray. For this story is our story. Our story of death and resurrection. And our story that reminds us again and again that death does not have the last word. That there is a victory over the grave. But let's not jump to that quite yet. Let's stay with this story, follow it through, stay and wait and pray. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living with one another in trust and hope, we now proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, God the Father and the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and, and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty and merciful God, lover of justice and equity, you call us to support the weak, to help those who suffer, and to see that everyone is created in your image. By the power of the Holy Spirit, and empower us to live every day as your followers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. God of compassion, your son Jesus, the great physician, made the broken whole and healed the sick. Touch those whom we lift before you now. Lee, Jim, Mary Jo, Patsy Ann, Sonny, Josh, Betty, Lisa, Paul, Judy, Ginger, Eleanor, Donna, Nelson, Bethany, Dawn, John, Andrew, Karen, Jan, Marge, Corinne, Kevin, Aiden, Tammy, Aria, Georgia, Jeff, Nick, Melissa, Joyce, Mason, Dawn, Steve, Glenn, Karen, Matt, Major, Jim, Jay, Margaret, Tom, Lydia, Cindy, Logan, Marie, Jack and Janet, John, Mary, Nick, Bob, Dave, Pat, Kevin, Karen, Gina, Don, Joan, Thelma, Tom, Dolly, Mary, Joanne, and Dan. Relieve their hurts of mind, body, and spirit, and restore them to wholeness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, whose steadfast love never ends, we ask that you look upon the nations now engaged in war and hasten the day of peace. Look in mercy on those exposed to peril, conflict, and death. Hold to account any with authority over others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy One, we pray for all our sisters and brothers in Christ, especially we ask you to bring a pastor to serve with us here in Balm. Bless those who guide your church, lay leaders, bishops, pastors, and deacons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, be with all who struggle with despair, darkness, and loneliness, and are considered or having considered death by suicide. Give each of them hope, light, and to know that they are not alone. Give grace and healing to the families of those who have died by suicide. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, in whom we live forever, we remember our loved ones who have died 
and now rest in your loving arms. Especially today, we remember Oscar Romero, bishop and martyr. Sustain us in your light and peace until we join them around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please stand. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless, Bless these gifts that we have gathered, gathered that all may know your know good news. Your goodness. Feed us, us not, not only with, with this holy food, food but, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your, your name. name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food 
the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is bread for the journey. All are welcome at Christ's table.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tested, tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.